Welcome back, everybody. Workshop number 28. Um, thought I'd wait till after the Christmas festivities were out of the way. Um, hope you've eaten a lot, drunk a lot, and now it's time to sort of calm down until we get ready for the New Year's Eve party and it all starts again. So uh, <clears throat> before I forget, Happy New Year to everyone when uh, that time comes around, in case I forget to say that at the end of the workshop. Um, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks before, well, since we've done a workshop, uh, mainly because I was waiting for a number of more images to be uploaded to the uh, Flickr site, but at the same time, getting my thoughts together with regards to showing you how what I term as a faux uh, infrared image can be created from your uh, raw file, rather than you fitting um, either a filter to your camera, an older camera which you don't use, or as they did in the old days, put a, um, an infrared filter on the front of the lens which really caused a lot of problems with focusing issues uh, and the like. Um, <clears throat> that was how they did it in the old days with a film, infrared film, which I understand you can't get anymore for 35 millimeter cameras uh, and probably for medium format now that I mention it. And they would uh, set the camera up um, usually on a tripod. They would then fit an infrared filter on the front of the lens to calm down the amount of light coming in and then basically uh, let the uh, camera do do the work uh, but you had to be so careful with infrared film in the changing the putting it in the camera the taking out and of course then the processing was uh, quite an expensive issue if you were doing it yourself then of course you saved quite a bit of money um, come on to the days of digital the first thing that came about was people realizing that they can actual fact could re replace the filter inside the camera with an infrared filter which allowed you basically to use the camera handheld uh which is what i've got on my fuji xe1 um and uh you can just shoot away there's no need for you to put it on a tripod you can uh you're effectively with an slr you're just seeing through the lens and of course as soon as the image is, is uh, released through the lens to the filter when the mirror flips out the way then of course the infrared activity is created so what is infrared <clears throat> infrared really works uh, where it highlights the greens and yellows um, especially in strong daylight and it has to be a green which is reflective to that light there's a lot of different shades of greens which just purely don't work so you're looking at leafage type um, uh, elements in in your uh, photograph setup and grass of course that uh, that is a great um, uh, advantage of infrared blues will come out basically very dark if not black and reds will have the same sort of activity as well so you're really looking at creating something with a, a high contrast Back in the day with film, they were very grainy. They were sort of very messy type images. One of my favorite photographers of all time, uh, um, Marsden, was an absolute art artist at this work where he would take photographs of cemeteries, of old buildings, and really create this wonderful art to his work. Uh, some which I really think you should, uh, should check out, uh, and if not, get one of his books. I have got a book here which uh, I'll try and grab before the end of the show. Uh, to uh, to show you but um, <clears throat> I think I've shown it to you before but is his type of work which really got me interested in infrared photography um, as I say come up to the present day using digital cameras it's totally different where you are in effect being able to use a camera uh, as a single lens reflexes the light comes uh, the image comes through the lens reflected from the mirror into the prism and you view the image through your viewfinder and it's not until that viewfinder flips out the way that you in actual fact see what your your the image is created as an infrared image now that's the second part of this show so first of all i want to take you straight to the uh <clears throat> to the Flickr site uh, just to have a quick quick look at um and comment on some of the work that's been uploaded um, we are getting very close now when we look at it. There's quite a number of uh, photographers which are um, posting their work. And uh, to be quite honest with you, um, I'm not really having a lot to say about them because they are really uh, amazing work which is being posted. So um, <clears throat> if I can just go to this screen share um, and uh, show you the work which has been uploaded. <clears throat> um so just uh just do a quick switch around to the windows which i've got open here yeah uh, this is when it all comes to it's all 
live and uncut so here's the uh the uh website that you can see from the Flickr group and we can see some really fantastic work being uploaded here now um so much so that i'm I'm finding it difficult to even start to make a, a comment um, of where I think it could be improved. Uh, they are that good. <clears throat> but let's start off with my image, which I posted up. And it's really just um, one of those images which you see and you take. And then when you get it back home, you realize there's something additional to, to the image, which is, which is um, you know, it gives you that pleasant surprise. And for me, it was this one where I saw this fella at uh, Victoria Station just having his sandwich before he's going to get the train and I got it on minus two EV really cut down the light and really looked to underexpose the image. Um, and he's having his sandwich there and the poster behind here's to a sparkling season, obviously a Coca-Cola advert. Fine. Got it. Looked in the view. It looked in the, the, uh, the, the screen on the back, loved it, moved on, didn't wait any more time. When I got home and started to, uh, to edit it, I noticed talking to strangers, because it looks as though he is talking to someone. In actual fact, he's looking in the reflective window here that uh, separates this, the uh, station platforms. And I think, in actual fact, he's looking at me. So it was that added little bit of a uh, uh, sort of bit of luck which came into that image. So uh, talking to strangers is what I called it. But that just goes to show you what can happen if you see a scene. Sometimes there's something in the background there which you just don't see. and. Uh, it adds to it when you when you do your development or editing. <clears throat> Steve Perkins posted this one of the famous uh, tree in the lake at Wanaka in New Zealand. Seen this quite a few times now. People are posting this one up. It's quite a unique tree, I understand. Interestingly enough, Trey Ratcliffe lives in this area. And can you believe it? Trey Ratcliffe missed the tree. Yeah, that's right. When he went down there to find this tree, he lost it. He didn't know where it was at all, mainly because he was looking at the coastline. He didn't realize the tree was in the middle of the lake. So there you go. Even the most experienced photographers can miss opportunities. But what can I fault about this one? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You deserve the followers. You deserve the favorites. And I'm trusting that you've got some great comments there, which you have. Uh, on this, Stephen, uh, Steve, sorry, it's a great image. I love the way you've created a little bit of extra special with your um, vignetting of the of the edges here and the on the cloud scene and the and this uh, beautiful amber orangey skyline you've created. Just a tinge of green in the leafage of this tree and this beautiful smoothness of the uh, of the lake can't afford it at all um <clears throat> interesting enough let's look at the data here xt1 on 50 mil lens but there's no f-stop man so this to me is possibly a third party lens um iso 200 <clears throat> good old fuji xt1 fantastic camera and it's done the job for you at 480th of a second um so well done for that um i can't see any mention as regards to what lens it was that you actually had on it but oh yeah sam yang 12 millimeter there it is thanks for putting it in with a 10 stopper on that's why you got the smoothness of the lake and uh this uh this lovely image of this passing stream of cloud and obviously the wide angle gives you that perfect pano look to this image uh lovely thank you steve for sharing that with us all this one made me laugh actually andrew when i first saw it because it looks sort of cartoonish when it's actually when you first see it and you you wonder whether it's real but is that driver ang really angry at you for taking his photograph well so be it if he is um bus driver with anger management issues yes you're quite right he has a little bit blown out in the sky here but that's not the that's not the problem uh, that is not the thing about this image it's not a problem the main concentration is right bang in the center and that's where you've put it in the center there and the driver looking straight down the barrel at you um doesn't look a happy chap, does he at all? Um, let's have a look at the EXIF data, see if we can get any more information from it. Um, usually when this happens, we don't, do we? We just get a, uh, a synopsis of all the, the background. Um, but anyway, it, it did make me laugh, and it looks cartoonish in the way that uh, it's been taken, you know, like a drawn cartoon. Uh, but uh, lovely, lovely capture on that. This one I like as well. You've got down the right hand side, the reflection off the street lights of all these cars, the backs and the bumpers, the front bumpers and the rear ends. And then you've got a little flash of shoe in the front there coming off the uh, 
of the uh, the light which must be be from behind you but then again another layer in you're looking into this uh food takeaway shop is an is it an english uh, english english takeaway robin chun it doesn't actually say it could be english food to take away so yeah is this taken overseas and it's an uh are they giving away steak and pie and chips or fish and chips in a in hong kong or something of that nature be interesting to know a little bit more detail about that um tesco night street little black and white monochrome well let's assume it was taken in the uk then but isn't that funny english food to take away love it um very well put together i like the way you've used the movement of the person in the street shot the static cars obviously obviously in a car park and then this little bit of interest in the back maybe just drop the highlight a little bit in that shop window we would see in a little bit more detail as regards to what's going on in there but not too much because that's where we get the main uh, light source for this uh, this particular image but uh, it's one that again it builds a story where was it taken where's that person going to what are they waiting for is it fish and chips or pie and chips you know it, it's that sort of picture and uh, it's uh, well seen and uh, well done robin that's a nice shot next one simple little woodland scene i think there's been some play on here for an infrared maybe winter blues it's called maybe a little bit of play with uh, with an idea for an infrared shot and good for you john you've you've if that's what you've looked to achieve then this is lovely it's a lovely dark um uh, trunks of the trees a little bit of leafage and the um the ground leaves and and uh, grasses there which uh, looks as though that's what you've um uh, attempted to do black and white black and white mount dog outdoor tree plant doesn't make any reference to it an, an attempt i'm not using that in any strict of a a, 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 a criticism i'm just saying it gives that in a feeling of an infrared uh edit uh presentation that's the word i'm looking for um winter blues a little bit of um uh, sort of a blue canna type i think they used to call it in the old days where the development gave that bluish hue to uh, to the images so nice scene that and well taken yes you've got a guy sitting down there and the guy with his back and there's uh, the arrows pointing this uh, tells you something as well look right and look left at these two individuals the inevitable everyone seems to be on the phone all the time these days and uh the other fellows yeah, it's a phone in there he's got his phone ready and uh this guy's reading and this guy's just wondering thinking when's my next stop and uh split straight down the middle left and right image real grainy effect to this one steve thanks for posting it again it's a very strong contrasty mono image xt1 f1 this is the giveaway we know it's a third party lens when we see that at 18th of a second so is uh handheld that at 18th of a second i'm going to assume well done for that you got it nice and crisp and sharp and here we go fuji film silver effects that's where he's uh, processed it in in nick software a lovely bit of kit fuji black and white photo monochrome i'm assuming it was again with the samyang although it's not mentioned at this time but uh taken in uh, new zealand again lake tech how do you pronounce that steve um i'm gonna have a go tekapo tikapo something like that lovely shot i really love the the uh i love the vignette in the corner i like the way you framed it as well that you've done something different here which is nice to see you've given those it's not a dead edge to the to the image you've you've uh, used uh, a um a, a filter to create this uh <clears throat> sort of like a come straight off the film like a plate a straight off a plate uh, shot um <clears throat> one thing i would say just looking at it here just be a little bit careful with the over sharpening on these edges here where well, you can see where you've got a highlight going straight down these edges and that just takes the uh, if i was um, uh, judging it in a competition would take a couple of marks off you've just overdone the the sharpening there which has caused that and that can be either overdoing the clarity overdoing the sharpening um and um 
you know, not paying quite final attention to those sharp edges, which will do it. Um, another way to uh, get rid of that would be to use the layer mask in uh, Lightroom, which is part of the um, the uh, sharpening and uh, noise reduction panel, uh, where you hit the Alt key and you can move the slider right up to to remove the um, effect on the on the sharp lines. Um, something which I may go over next time. That's the only thing that I would say on this particular image. Be a little bit careful. If it was in a competition, that would, for sure, it would be marked down on that basis. But I love the, I love the composition. I love the uh, vignette that you've created. The center, the it, sorry, the image is on this chap on this chapel. Uh, yet there's so much to see. This beautiful skyline here of the mountain re mountainous regions, the skyline as well. It does come together very, very nicely indeed. But just be a little bit careful of your sharpening. <clears throat> three four birds in flight from joe phipps this is a new member by the looks of things joe thank you and welcome to the uh thank you and welcome to the uh, workshop thanks for posting this december the 6th um yeah call the birds in flight um it appears to be a little bit grainy but that's probably what you were looking to achieve i like the way you've you've used the the base of the image to for the trees you haven't just put the birds on their own you've got a fifth bird here in the, in the trees which is a little bit lost so but that that doesn't really matter much um but i love the way you've you've caught these four birds here in particularly in flight now the only thing i'm querying is um i don't understand why we've got these black specks on here but again as you can see we may be just suffering a little bit from over sharpening um of those images when we come to uh to look at them closely um but it is a great capture of uh, four stroke five birds in flight <clears throat> um i would like I'm, joe as time goes on you'll hear me say this a lot you you i do like to see a vignette in the corners um, and I think that would be uh, encouraged uh, to do on this particular image, just a very slight vignette to concentrate my my uh, central viewing into the to see the birds. I get a little bit lost up into these corners. I'm really being pernickety here. I would hasten to add, but uh, I do like to see a vignette on on uh, the edges, uh, mainly to concentrate my my viewing into the centre. Straightforward shot from uh, James here of uh, the uh, stairways, uh, stairways to heaven almost. Oh, as we called it, uh, stairway to heaven um, with the blue. The blue looks a bit strange though. It looks almost turquoise -y, turquoisey. Um, uh, how's that come about? You use film, Lomography 800. That's probably the reason why, because of the film that has created this almost unnatural skyline color um and the building you're you're playing with angles here as well the building's slightly leaning to the left that happens and some people say don't like it others say yeah why not it's a, a marmite type situation um but uh, i like the composition um it, personally speaking i'm not too keen on the turquoise but that's obviously because you've used this Lomography 800 film, which obviously plays about with the uh, the colours at the end of the day. But ten favourites. Uh, so uh, there's people out there enjoying your work. It's to me, James, you've done better. Um, but that's a personal point of view. Again, I would vignette the corners. This made me laugh when I first saw it. Atsy, thanks for posting it. Because is this guy amazed at what he's about to eat or being served up or what he's finished eating or is he angry with his girlfriend or has he proposed to her and she said no uh, <laughs> so there's lots and lots of things to think about in this image um but another thing is it set up it doesn't matter if it is set up but it does make you wonder because the look on her face is how could you do that to me in this restaurant how could you do that you're making yourself look stupid and uh it's a great a little bit of movement in the hand, which is lovely. And she's just looking at her boyfriend, husband in total disgust. And it's well seen image. And all those questions crop up. 
is it the meal he's just enjoyed is he angry because she said no to him or she's not going to be able to go out with him the next time around whatever it's, it's so many questions that come about here so thank you Atsy, for sharing that image this one again okaha made me laugh because the face mask is not doing the job is it it's got blown about in the wind and um with respect to the, to her faith um it uh, it should be doing a slightly better job than that so uh well spotted well taken uh very good composition um and uh yeah i i wonder i don't think her husband would be too pleased but uh, well done for uh, for showing that XT1 again, 5.6 on the 18 mil, uh, taken at one four hundredth of a second. Well done. What an interesting shot. Love the spokes, the umbrella. Would be curious to know the backstory of this person. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a good lens, the 18 mil. I've only used it a couple of times. I haven't got one, but I've uh, only used it a couple of times, and it is a good lens. There's no doubt about it. So well done for that. Okay, how well, well done a uh, great shot here from andrew i love the expression on this little boy he's obviously talking to his dad uh down on the uh canal region there and all the river regions in bangkok and uh <clears throat> it's uh it's just beautiful isn't it um fuji xt10 a lot of fuji users now in this group um <clears throat> 35 mil the weather weather resistant uh, uh lens uh f 5.6 and 1 60th of a second beautiful composition maybe just a little bit too much on the left hand side for my liking um and i'd like to see a little vignette as well just again to en enhance me make me look uh at this uh at this the the boy and the and the father but a lovely expression on this little boy's face and uh i'll just blow it up it's just a it, it's just a, a beautiful beautiful shot This one, when I first saw it, I, I was really struggling to understand why. Um, it's a natural lead-in shot to a wheelbarrow. Should the photographer have moved a little bit more to the right to separate the wheelbarrow away from the railings? That really is a pernickety comment to make. But the one thing, when I first saw it, I thought it was mono. But then, of course, I noticed that you can see the red handles on the wheelbarrow, which adds a different dimension to it. They're very small in the image, and they're on the right third uh, but it, it that those red handles just make a slight difference uh to when i'm viewing it and um it, it's grown on me as i've seen it more often natural leading lines uh a to the wheelbarrow with the planks and then the other line on the left hand side um and uh yeah it's the, the fuji xe1 uh that he's used there uh, it's third party lens again and we have got no mention of the third party lens but is it in the no it won't be in there because <clears throat> it won't register so be interested to know what camera you used uh lens you used there but it's an, an image which has grown on me definitely This one reminded me of um, a William Klein type style or a William Eggleston type image where you've you've just walked along the street and you've seen this beautiful red bonnet. You've turned, you've taken the photograph and they're both looking at you or what one is definitely looking at the other ones looked down. And I just love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's the type of image which you could I'm, I'm sure you could sell this image because it is so indicative of that period of photo uh, photographs that were taken by William Klein and Eggleston natural community image shot. Uh, and it's superb that you've got the, the, um, the eye contact with that lady in the driving seat. Um, and at first I thought that was a newspaper in the, uh, in the window, in the window front uh, of the dashboard, but it's not, is it? It's a reflection of the building on the other side of the, of the street by the looks of things. And it, it's just, just perfect. I, I love it. I love it. Maybe just a little vignette in the top left-hand corner to rid myself of that white van, but really, I, I just love it. it purely and simply because of that period of photography with, uh, the, uh, Eggleston and Klein, uh, took, um, 
what was that in around about the 60s early 70s <clears throat> this one is very poignant lovely use of being observant uh, thanks for posting it james especially at this time of the year um the uh the homeless person here asleep at the foot of the steps but the words want on the right hand side there x pro 2 with the lens baby twist uh which gives that uh view um let's just bring you can see the sharpness in the middle but you can see how the focus issue is taken out on the on the edges of the of the frame which is what the lens baby twist does 60 mil i've i've heard some very good reports about this lens um so um again you can see there's no registration on the exif data because of this this lens is not coupled with the fuji system but um it just goes to show you what can be achieved and, the, and it's in its 100 percent great observation the using of the uh the use of the homeless person with that word there want and uh showing the urban area which this uh, person is having to make <clears throat> make cam and get some sleep another great shot by christopher here he's taken obviously the uh the little girls here making a um uh, singing uh, she sings entitled it it's great the fact the concentration is on the right here of this uh this little girl and the other two are just one slightly out of focus and the other one obviously out of focus so great use of depth of field which you would expect uh with this type of camera and lens um 2.8 f 2.8 125th of a second and uh it's it's well you don't need me to click in and show you the sharpness of this lens um and uh let's show the blurred part and you can see the concentration is on this little girl look at that and the catch light in their eyes as well so well done for posting that uh christopher and 87 views and just two two favorites um, is it because it's not a popular photograph is it because it doesn't show any, it, it should have more favorites than that it's a it's a perfect shot a perfect shot um can't say any more than that you deserve more recognition through the Flickr group for, for that this one uh, <clears throat> by Steve Perkins I'm not even going to pronounce the peer or the wolf Steve you can probably send it to me frenetically but I haven't got a clue but it's a great shot um, using uh, your XT1 again and uh, yeah you've you've released a third-party lens here it is Samyang 12 mil again um, and it's great isn't it it's got lovely amber colors and the blue in the background there this is this is sunset here by the looks of things beautifully balanced image uh very strong element in the front there of the pier and then the other three receding to the left hand side so you've got a natural lead there but this is the strong element all showing all that rust beautifully sharp um and you haven't really got any problems with the sharpening this time like uh, has happened before with other images um and um yeah that works for me that one um the vignette again big favorite the vignette which works it's uh it's a lovely lovely shot joe posted up this one and she's got quite a bit of a following look at this 5341 views and 179 favorites and um <clears throat> i am not going to even start critiquing this one because of so many um so many favorable uh clicks uh landscape nikon then the, 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 we don't see the lens which i would have liked to have seen but that doesn't matter i suppose um show exif no nothing shown on that um interestingly enough it's an image taken straight into the sun uh yet the camera has been able to store information in the front they're not pure silhouettes so Joe has been able to rescue some of that uh, obviously what would have been dark shadow um, in the editing process to create a little bit of green and yellow foliage in the front here uh, beautiful blue skies these are silhouetted naturally and then of course uh, the other uh, everything else just flows in to to the image um it's, it's a it's a good bit of it's a great photograph but at the same time it's a very good piece of editing uh, that you've put together there um this is not purely down to the image taken um because um <clears throat> the camera wouldn't have been able to 
to do that in camera. I'd be very surprised if it did, but you've done some very good editing there to bring just a little bit of detail out in the bottom rather than just being blocked out black. Thank you, Joe, and welcome uh, to our little uh, workshop here. Finally, uh, Andrew's posting here, a little bit overexposed. Um, it looks like on the left-hand side, um, great detail on the uh, on the right hand side with the boats and the roofs and the seats as you can see I would have liked to have seen a little bit of um, a um, graduated filter across here just to to bring this uh, down down a little from its overexposed nature um, please accept my comment um, as I say although james has made the company loves the metallic finish to this image um you've given it a sort of a painterly look painterly effect up here by the looks of things you've done some work in the editing which is thrown me a little bit in terms of what i'm looking at and what i'm enjoying but personally i would still like to have seen that a little bit um a little bit more contrast and I think it's just slightly overexposed. But I understand that potentially you're looking to try and create something different. So thanks for that, uh, posting those up. And as I say, we're now getting very close to a lot of images, which there's nothing really for me to make a comment on, uh, apart from a uh, little little bits uh, over sharpening please be careful about your over sharpening uh, if you start getting to see you'll see these white highlights on the straight edges and and you can adjust them in um, in your uh, um, editing with um, with uh, Lightroom so <clears throat> now very briefly um, I'm going to do a uh, little workshop on infrared photography um, I'm hoping that I can uh, get everything for you to see and I'm going to do a quick flick back yes I think you can see the whole image um, if by chance you don't see this um, I'll make another attempt it is one of the big problems with uh, doing a Google Hangout with with Lightroom sometimes you don't get the left or right menu uh, uh, options available but <clears throat> what I really want to show you here this is just some images I selected this afternoon where I've uh, uh, can create a, a, a faux FAUX infrared image from a raw file this is not using a camera with a, an infrared filter fitted either on the lens or uh, inside the camera um, so the first image which I'm going to show you is this one which I took in um, in Hamburg of one of the pleasure boats uh, which uh, they have quite a number of and then I created this with the use of uh, the editing tools that you have um, in Lightroom now remember what I mentioned to you last time to really make take advantage of infrared is to have blues and to have reds and if you can also the greens and yellows of uh, uh, for the image to really take on the full uh, effect of an infrared image in addition to that the one thing you can see in this one is increasing the noise or the grain and taking down the clarity the one thing about infrared photography they were never ever clear and precise and sharp they were always as ted forbes mentioned it once on my show a mess so uh, this was taken with my uh, nikon one uh, when i had it and that's uh, you can see it's an nef raw file and i thought what i'd do is i show you the next image which is uh, taken with the Fuji XE1 and we're going to edit this uh, particular version now into an infrared image now this one has got some darker green at the front which I'm not expecting to be reflected in the infrared image but it's certainly got the blues and it's got some green there on the um, the uh, roof 
uh, section of the um, the tarpaulin on that yacht in the front there. So let's see how we go. Now you can see basically I've already done some work on it to create and enhance those colors. But the first thing I would do here for this one is go straight to the black and white option, click on the black and white, and all the filters open up with that. And it immediately goes to what it thinks you want to do with the black and white image that basically just replaces the the colors at their particular levels but we now want to enhance those colors we want to brighten up the greens and take it right to their extremity not a lot of change there as you can see we want to darken the blues we can take them the blues down you can see the sky goes straight away and then we take the reds down or lighten the reds sorry we'll lighten the oranges you can see things are slightly changing in the image now as we as we make adjustments to these this image the blue does a little bit but we can change that take that down so we're really taking everything down to its extremities and this is what we would have done in a normal uh, color shot uh, in Photoshop by taking everything to 100% uh, positive and 100% negative in terms of the blues and the reds but we've got these extra filters which add to it now this hasn't really produced the type of shot that I would have expected from the uh, from the idea. I think there's a couple more images later which will give me a better uh, example. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do on this basis is just show you in actual fact what happens when we uh, concentrate on on getting that um, infrared look to the images. Now you can see that I've taken the highlights right down. So I'm going to brighten the highlights up. And then I'm going to take the shadows and I'm going to drop the shadows. And then the clarity, instead of it looking to, let's take it to the, the top end uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the clarity to show you what actually happens there. It goes really sort of over contrast, it doesn't it? So let's drop it right down to minus. And now we're starting to get uh, that messy type view of a, of a um, of an infrared shot now it's gone too much in my opinion so we just bring that back we drop the blacks it's coming down a little bit more and we're really just working all the sliders at their extremities and look the only suggestion here is blue at minus 100 I hope you can see that and all the others are at plus 100 finally what I would do on this one we've now reduced the clarity so much I really want to bring in that grainy effect and then the bottom of uh, of the uh, Lightroom editing tools you know, go to grain and you can take that grain right to almost 74% and it will wait for it to work and it will give you this effect now when this comes to be printed this will load up in a minute you can see in the bottom right it's still loading when this is printed it will give it that really um infrared styled look uh to your photograph and uh we come down to the front here you can see this is still loading down the front here uh you can see that the the greens haven't really worked uh out because they were too dark a green they have to be a leafy green like a grass green to reflect the light uh to give you that infrared image that's that's going to take too long to for me to uh fill you can see it's loading very slow it's quite a big file <clears throat> so as it turned out it hasn't turned out too bad uh, and you know i'm quite pleasantly pleased with that so i'll leave that one and we'll go on to another one which has got more uh green in it uh taken in the fields in uh and uh, the Norwegian fields on a, on a cruise which went up there and you can see now this has got the greens and it's got the blues and it's got that very misty day we arrived in uh, the Norwegian fields and it rained every single day but it gave me such a beautiful uh, I don't know some eerie type view and look of all these fields and uh, we we're very fortunate the captain took the ship up one of these fields and just spun the ship on a sixpence whilst we looked at this beautiful scenery all around us. So let's see what we can do here. And again, I'm looking to enhance the greens, the blues and the reds and the oranges and the yellows. So I've done some earlier work on it, as you can see. Um, we'll go down to the black and white option. 
a little bit slow on the uh, on the computer here at the moment, but uh, hopefully <clears throat> you can see what I'm doing. Let's get back to where I was. There we are. Click on the black and white. That opens up all the filters. <clears throat> you can see it's gone to a black and white image, and it's uh, Lightroom has associated what he they it thinks you want. But I want to enhance a few things. So let's let's blacken that blue. That's done it a, a little bit more. Let's take the aqua down. Uh, let's lighten the reds there you go see the lifeboats have come out and the and the yellows there they've done that uh, the oranges and then the yellows a little bit more that changed something in the in the scene here now the next big thing which i'm hoping is going to really make the big difference is let's take these there we go let's take those greens right the way up to the highest point that they can and then i don't think there's any purple or magenta in the image just a, probably a little bit in the sky which i uh, added uh, in my color editing and we'll just basically put everything to one well, apart from aqua aqua brings a little bit more into the the, the sea there so it's giving me that effect now um, as i said you will go to um the the grain i'm not going to touch any of the uh sharpening let's have a look see what the masking does this is this alt down and masking goes to totally white and then you bring up the uh the slider until you see something of this nature by doing that you will get rid of some of those halos um on your images you can see what i'm doing here basically it's masking what it wants to um sharpen and what it doesn't so that comes there i've still got a little bit of a halo that doesn't matter because that will disappear when I adjust the clarity slider, which goes down to there, and you can see immediately I'm getting a, an effect, a little bit more contrast. Uh, uh, we can go totally the other way with the light, the light highlights, as I said to you before. Uh, bring the shadows down get it into a perspective for what we want too much highlight i think and then the final bit once we've done that i think i'm all right with sharpening i'll put a little vignette in and then we'll add the grain and we'll just wait for that to to load up And you can see the grain in there when it loads. Let's wait for my wheel to move around. This is very much the type of photography that I was always Marmite photography. You love it or you hate it. And it's an effect which really is enhanced more when you, um, when you print it rather than uh, show it on the screen. Just trying to get the image as large as I can for you. Okay, one final one, which I'll do, which is of a uh, water fountain um, in a town called Mannheim. <clears throat> And this really has got the full spectrum of the colors which we're looking for the blue sky the light green and they've got the yellow flowers we've got the lighter green trees and grass uh, a little bit of uh purple magenta leafage there as well which uh, could be a bit of fun when we when we come to uh do some some manipulation of this image um i took the image deliberately to use as an infrared but i've never got around to uh, to doing any work on it so you can see they're all centralized completely on here so we'll go straight to the black and white we'll adjust the blue straight away and there's the black of the blue coming in superbly the light of the green does that the yellows are enhanced even more 
the oranges do a little bit more to it and the reds we can make those yellows even brighter if we want there's a little bit of purple in the background there you can just see it's changing around there if you concentrate there you'll see it change very very slightly and then there's a little bit of magenta which doesn't really make much odds let's see if the aqua makes any adjustments it normally it does sometimes it just does a little bit there but i'm making that a little bit too dark let's just enhance the the um the reds the oranges and the yellows i'm, I'm almost to 100 percent there on those now <clears throat> As that is a balanced black and white image for me to make into my faux uh, infrared, that works just perfectly as I see it. I'm just going to add a little bit of sharpness because I haven't done this before and the luminance. Let's do the masking again. Alt key down and slide across to uh, to mask the areas which I don't want to be sharpened, which is the skyline. Um, I would probably do a little bit more work on this in terms of uh, bringing out that uh, tower a little bit more. We'll probably, if we've got time, I'll have a go at that. I've just switched it to the Fuji Film uh, element in the uh, in the edit menu, the developing menu, and now I'm just going to apply my vignette. Um, and now I'm going to go back up to the clarity, and I'm going to reduce the clarity. To give this what appears to be a messy look and then right the way down the bottom again we come down to the grain and push the grain to 74 percent okay so that's done a very neat effect there so back up to the top and let's have a look see what the highlights do to this let's increase the highlights done a bit of work on the tower there for me which is what i'm looking to do let's decrease the shadows a little bit it's just made a change to the uh to the trees in the background there the whites see the whites here and the, the flowers I'll leave the blacks as it is and I'm just going to try as I've got a little bit of time I don't want to go too long for you is to see if I can just cloak that tower a little bit with the uh, developing tool and just add a little bit of exposure to that tower cloak it a little bit see if I can just bring a little bit of detail into that tower area there without going over the top on it fit and there we go how about if we just do one final thing one more what would happen if we Take a little development tool, go right across the center. Add a bit of contrast because I want to emphasize those water fountains and that highlights there. Drop the shadows just a little bit to enhance them. I could do a little bit more work on that, but I'm really quite pleased the way that's uh, that's beginning to develop. This was the original. Wait for it to go back. <clears throat> and that's the new, what I would term as a faux image in um, an infrared style created by using um, Lightroom. So it's quite amazing what you can do with uh, with uh, Lightroom, you know, <laughs> to a degree. Yeah, spend two hundred and fifty pounds, three hundred pounds on the um, 
uh, on your filter in your camera because it is different. I'll, I'll show you um, uh, another option that, that would happen when you get your images back using, a, an, inf using an infrared converted camera. But that's some, just really it's amazing what can be achieved using Lightroom, and I hope it's been of interest to you. And if you want to have a, a try at making some uh, next time round and post them up onto the uh, onto the Flickr site, it would be great to see them. So anyway, that was how I would adjust a normal color raw file into uh, 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 an image that uh, replicates. How about that? Uh, infrared and um, it's good fun I love doing infrared and I really do appreciate the work by uh, uh, Sir Marsden when he was uh, alive doing his fantastic work of uh, of um, the cemeteries and uh, castles and um, all sorts of things that he did which are certainly a great website to go and check out Anyway, suffice to say, uh, can I wish you all a happy new year? I'm looking forward to doing more workshops in the new year. Uh, please take a chance to go and check out photographyliveanduncut.com. There's a couple of new pages on there. There's some workshops that I'm creating in London. Uh, the first one takes place on the 11th of February with a fantastic studio stroke lifestyle photographer, Robert Aguilia. He is going to do a workshop on his workshop workflow rather uh, for his type of work. Uh, it's going to be well worth a day spending with us uh, in Battersea uh, doing the, uh, the workshop with him. It's going to be from 10 till 6. So it's a real packed day. And uh, I'm talking to Roberto. We've got some. Uh, he's got some great ideas which he's going to put together for you so hopefully you can uh, check that uh, site out <clears throat> especially if you're close to london um there is a fee for it unfortunately i can't nothing's for free these days apart from this lovely little workshop uh it's 165 pounds but it is for the day and uh you will without a shadow of doubt learn a lot from uh, what i term he's, he's a great photographer and a great guy as well I've got another couple of workshops coming up as well in the near future. If you are in London, the 7th of January, I've just got a very small uh, meetup. But there's only uh, eight slots available for the small meetup in London. That's on the 7th of January. It's a Saturday. Um, hopefully you can go now. So go to meetup.com uh, and, and check out Streetwise. That's the name of the uh, the uh, meetup group on, uh, on that particular site, Streetwise. And uh, join us for that one. There's a small fee for that one as well. And then hopefully, be depending on how things work, I'm looking to do another workshop in London uh, with uh, a, a couple of photographers, Carlo and Fabi, in the February stroke March period of time, but concentrating on boudoir photography and portrait, female por women portrait photography, which again, looking at these guys works on the website are absolutely amazing and that would of course will be a fee-based uh, workshop as well so hopefully you'll be interested but please go to photography live and uncut where you'll see the details and all the natural links where you can go on to uh, and uh, go on from there and I, I hope that we'll we'll meet up and you can come along and uh, we can have a good old chat and a few cups of coffee and and especially with those photographers, uh, you'll definitely learn something, believe me. So thanks again for watching my little workshop here. Um, look forward to seeing you in the new year. Have a great happy new year, great time, great party. Um, yeah, go on, have a good drink on me. All the best to you. Bye for now.